Yes, guys. So let's talk about statutory reserves. What are the statutory reserves? I have in all three statutory reserves. First one, investment allowance reserve. IAR Export Profit Reserve EPR and finally Development Repeat Reserve Now the typical part about these three reserves are, these three reserves are called as statutory reserves. They are created as per a particular statutory compliance. Now whenever we have these three reserves, the only logic is, whenever you are talking about a statutory reserve in the case of an amalgamation or a corporate restructuring process, the reserve in the selling company, if I have a statutory reserve, compulsory should be appearing even after the corporate restructuring process. So, if I have these reserves in a selling company, they have to be appearing even in the books of purchasing company at the end of the corporate restructuring process. That is the logic behind your statutory reserves. So, whenever I am talking about statutory reserve, again I will have to talk about two treatments. One in the case of a merger and the other one in the case of purchase. Now, whenever I am talking about the case of a purchase method, When amalgamation is by nature of purchase, where we apply purchase method for a statutory reserve, first logic you need to understand in a purchase method, selling company reserves are not taken over by purchasing company. The selling company's reserves will not be taken over by the purchasing company whenever I am having a purchase method. But what is the necessary condition for a statute reserve? Compulsory a statute reserve should appear as far as the corporate restructuring process is concerned in the books of purchasing company as well. Though I am not taking over the reserve, I still have to see statute reserve appearing after the corporate restructuring process. Reserve always has a credit balance. So let me credit the reserve. I have to bring in the statute reserve after the absorption process or amalgamation process is complete. And to debit, I have something called as amalgamation adjustment account. An entry is passed. So that the statutory reserve of the selling company is taken over by the purchasing company as well. And a new account that we see here is the amalgamation adjustment account which is appearing. Now this amalgamation adjustment account should be grouped under other non-current assets. in the balance sheet of purchasing company. Post merger. So on merger, when we take over the statute reserve of the selling company, it should appear in the purchasing company balance sheet under other non-current assets. But whenever we have a pooling of interest method, We have earlier seen in the pooling of interest method saying that the balance of the entry when the net assets are taken over will adjust it against reserves. Now such an adjustment against reserve what he says is statutory reserve cannot be utilized.
for absorption of a new term which will be coined here surplus and should be taken over by purchasing company. Now, I know the sentence does not make sense <clears throat> because the first thing, we don't know what the surplus is. But I'm just saying that I cannot use it for the absorption of this word surplus and should be compulsory taken over by the purchasing company. To understand what this surplus is and what is this utilization or absorption of surplus is concerned, we'll have to look at the entire pooling of interest method again. Let's talk about pooling of interest method. A purchase method is simple where the difference of the entry should be written to goodwill or capital reserve. But whenever we are discussing about the pooling of interest method, the first thing we need to do is identify surplus. How do we identify a surplus? Surplus is nothing but purchase consideration minus share capital of selling company. This is called a surplus. After you identify surplus, the surplus should be adjusted against reserves of selling company. Whatever surplus you have identified PC minus share capital, such surplus should be adjusted against the reserves of selling company. Now, whenever I am adjusting this, exclude statutory reserve. Because in the statutory reserve, I clearly said the statutory reserve cannot be utilized for the absorption of surplus. Same thing. So I'm saying that you can adjust it against the reserves of selling company, but you cannot consider your statute reserve. Let's say the reserves of selling company were not sufficient to absorb surplus. If selling company reserves are insufficient, To absorb surplus, utilize purchasing company reserves. So if the reserves of selling company are over and more surplus is there, such unadjusted surplus can be adjusted using your purchasing company reserves. Balance unadjusted surplus if any, that means my surplus was adjusted against the reserves of selling company and then I have utilized the reserves of purchasing company, reserves of purchasing company are also over, then the balance unadjusted surplus is transferred to goodwill. So, if you have an opinion that whenever a pulling of interest method is there, I won't get goodwill, absolutely wrong. I do have a situation where I can get goodwill whenever you are talking about pulling of interest method as well. My balance of reserves in selling company After adjustment of surplus, are taken over by purchasing company. Now, let's 
use these rules and let's try to see how this absorption of surplus takes place. Let's say I have a selling company balance sheet. Let's say I have started a purchasing company balance sheet which looks something like this. Equity share capital of 100. My reserves and surplus, let's say, includes a general reserve of 80. And let's say some statutory reserve. I am Whatever a statutory reserve it may be, we have three statutory reserve in total. Some statutory reserve was 60. And I have another liability of 40. Let's say my total assets were 280. In a selling company, let's say I have an equity share capital of 100. My reserves and surplus included, let's say, a general reserve of 60. Let's make it as 45. And I have statutory reserve here. For 25. And some other liabilities for 30. And if my total assets are 200. Let's see how it happens. Let's talk about some cases. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. First thing, what do we have to do? First step, identify surplus. How do you identify surplus? Purchase consideration minus share capital of selling company. Let's say PC less share capital of selling company. This will give us surplus. The surplus we have identified should be adjusted against reserve of selling company first. Always first thing surplus should be adjusted against the reserves of selling company. So I've identified surplus and I'm adjusting against the reserves of selling company. What reserve can be used? I can use only general reserve. I cannot use statute reserve because we clearly said statute reserve should be excluded. It cannot be utilized for the absorption of surplus. So general reserve. Let's say if the selling company reserves are not sufficient, then what do we have to do? We can use purchasing company reserves. Adjusted against reserve of purchasing company. After being adjusted against the reserves of purchasing company, purchasing company, first of all, how many reserves are there in purchasing company? One general reserve, one statute reserve. I can only use general reserve for this purpose. Statute reserve cannot be utilized for absorption of surplus. I have an adjusted surplus sometimes which we clearly said balance an adjusted surplus after adjusting against selling company reserves after adjusting against purchasing company reserves an adjusted surplus should be transferred to goodwill and finally we are saying the balance of the reserves in the selling company should be taken over by purchasing company. Selling company reserves taken over. I can either take over a general reserve or I can take over the statute reserve. Let's go case by case basis. Let's say in the first case, my PC is taken as 120. What is the share capital in S limited? Share capital of the selling company is 100. What is the surplus then? Surplus is nothing but PC minus share capital of selling company. 120 minus 100, my surplus is 20. I need to adjust the surplus against the reserves of selling company. My reserves of selling company, only one reserve can be used, that is general reserve. I can't use the statute reserve. Do I have sufficient general reserve? Yes. General reserve is 45, surplus is only 20. 
So I can adjust this surplus against the general reserve of selling company. I don't need to use purchasing company reserve at all because selling company reserve is sufficient. There is no unadjusted surplus to be transferred to goodwill at all. What is the selling company reserve taken over? How much general reserve was there? 45. How much did you utilize? 20. What is the balance reserve? 25. What is the statutory reserve? 25. I did not adjust it against the surplus. Entire 25 will be taken over. Let's take second case. Let's say this was 150. 100 rupees share capital. 50 rupees surplus. How much I can adjust against selling company general reserve? 45. But surplus is 50. That means there is unadjusted surplus of 5. Can I use statutory reserve? No. So I cannot use the statutory reserve of the selling company. I still have an unadjusted surplus of 5. So what did we say? If selling company reserves are not sufficient, then start using purchasing company reserves. So I use let's say 5 from general reserve of purchasing company. Now check. Sufficiently absorbed. Surplus is completed. Now unadjusted surplus is 0. What is the reserve of selling company taken over? Selling company had a general reserve of 45. Entire 45 adjusted against the surplus. Balance general reserve taken over is 0. But statutory reserve 25 is existing. I did not adjust anything against the statutory reserve. The entire statutory reserve can be taken over. That is 25. Let's keep increasing. Let's take it to the next level. So this was 80, right? So let's take this to 250 now. Now whenever I'm taking this to 250, 100 rupees of share capital, 150 rupees of surplus, what I can use from selling company reserve is only 45. I can't use beyond that. That will clear your general reserve from selling company, which is zero now. Balance reserve, balance surplus should be adjusted against the reserve of purchasing company. Purchasing company also I can't use statute reserve. All I can use is the general reserve of 80. Let's say I used 80. Now what happens? 150 surplus, total adjusted is only 125. So I'll have an unadjusted surplus transfer to goodwill for 25. So 45 plus 80 plus 25 back to 150. What is the selling company reserve taken over? General reserve 0 because I had 45, I used 45. Selling company's statute reserve compulsory taken over 25. You increase it further, you keep seeing that the goodwill keeps increasing. You increase it to 300, then your good, everything will remain the same. Your goodwill will be added by 50. You add 60 to your PC, your goodwill also will add it by 60. Now let's see why not there can be a situation where this is only 80 and this is 100. Possible. So what happens? My surplus is negative 20. Whenever I have a negative surplus, this negative surplus should be transferred to capital reserve. I don't have to use anything because there is no surplus at all. So what is the reserve of selling company taken over? Entire 45 general reserve, entire 25 statute reserve can be taken over. This is how we adjust the surplus. I'll check, we'll also check the entries. First take down this till here.
Yes, guys, let's see the journal entries in those four cases that we have taken. First case, when we are taking over assets and liabilities of the selling company, assets account debit. I also take over the liabilities to other liabilities liabilities and selling company books are 30 under the first assumption the purchase consideration is 120 so to business purchase The entry will not tally. In the first column, we have adjusted 20 general reserve and we have taken over general reserve of 25 and statute reserve of 25. So when we are taking over reserve shows a credit balance to general reserve 25 to statutory reserves. Twenty-five. Now check the entry will tally automatically. Check the second entry now. As usual, assets should be taken over. Assets account debit two hundred. Liabilities also should be taken over. So to other liabilities. Thirty. Business purchase. What is the purchase consideration under second assumption? 150. But if you check, I am taking over a statutory reserve of 25 to statutory reserve. If I take over 25, the entry will not tally. 200 and below it is 205 in the credit. So, 5 debit is still pending. Now, where is this 5 debit? The 5 debit is for the purchasing company reserve used. We are passing the entry in the books of purchasing company. When I am using his reserve, his reserve shows a credit balance. I have to debit his reserve. I have utilized his general reserve. So, general reserve account debit is 5. Only towards the purchasing company reserve. That's it. Selling company reserve, I will not pass the entry because I am passing the entry in the books of Purchasing company. Go for the third entry. Third entry, assets account debit. Taking over an asset of 200. To other liability is 30. To business purchase. What is the second, third assumption? Purchase consideration is 250. What are the reserves taken over? Compulsory reserve to be taken over is statutory reserve. There is no escape from this. 25. Is your entry tallying? No. You basically have almost 105 debit which is in excess. Now let's see from where do we get this. The first thing that we need to talk about is the general reserve of purchasing company utilized. I am passing the entry in the books of purchasing company books. So if I am using his reserve, I have to debit the reserve. General reserve account debit 80. What else do we have? We have unadjusted surplus transfer to goodwill 25. Now the entry will perfectly tally. Similarly, check the fourth one. Assets account debit. I'm taking over assets of 200. Other liabilities. 30. Business purchase. In the fourth case, what is the amount of purchase consideration? 80. Entry does not tally because you are taking over reserves to general reserve. Selling company reserves taken over. 45 general reserve. And I am also taking over statutory reserve of the selling company. 
25. Still the entry does not tally. 200 debit. Now check your credits. 150 plus 30, 180. I am still not satisfied with this because I am still not getting the entry tally. The reason is because of the negative surplus of 20 which we transferred to capital reserve. So to capital reserve. This is how we pass the entries when we are talking about pooling of interest method. Take down the entries as well guys on the four assumptions.
let's look at the next topic a small one regarding expenses on amalgamation amalgamation expenses treatment Now, whenever we are talking about the treatment for expenses, I need to talk about both the books of selling company as well as in the books of purchasing company. Let's take case by case basis. First case. When the expenses are paid by selling company, only the selling company pays expenses. Expenses are paid by selling company, purchasing company has nothing to do with the transaction. But in the selling company books, we record the entry as realization account debit to cash. An expense paid should reduce my profit. So I am debiting the realization account so that the profit on realization will automatically reduce with the amount of expenses paid. First adjustment. Second one. If the expenses are paid by purchasing company. If the expenses are paid by purchasing company, one thing is for sure that the selling company need not record anything. But when I am talking about the books of purchasing company recording, again I have two methods. Pooling of interest and purchase method. So let's say we have a purchase method first. If I am talking about a purchase method calculation, purchase method we look at net assets and the amount of PC and we decide what is the amount of goodwill or capital reserve. When expenses are paid, that means over and above the PC, extra I am paying for the expenditure. Extra cash is being paid for the expenditure. That means what happens? My PC, what I am paying to acquire that company is higher. When the amount which I paid for the company is higher, obviously my goodwill will also increase or my capital reserve will reduce. So I will record the entry like this. Goodwill account debit. I am increasing the amount of goodwill or I will debit capital reserve that is nothing but reducing capital reserve only. Capital reserve normally shows credit balance to cash. When I debit, I will debit goodwill. When the net assets taken over entry showed goodwill, I will debit the capital reserve. If the net assets taken over entry shows capital reserve. But whenever I am coming with pooling of interest method, In this case, add to PC. Now why do I say add to PC? In a simple sense, when I increase the purchase consideration with the amount of expenses paid, surplus increases. When surplus increases, what happens? The amount adjusted towards the surplus will also increase. When the amount paid adjusted towards the surplus is also increasing, understand the amount of reserves taken over will reduce. So I can say that the entry can be recorded like this. Reserve account debit to cash. You don't have to record any particular entry like this guys. Once you include in the PC obviously it is implied there. When the expenses are paid by selling. And reimbursed by purchasing. When the expenses are paid by selling company and reimbursed by purchasing company. In this case, when the expenses are paid by selling company, in this case, basically what we will try to do is. 
add purchasing consider purchase consideration with the expenses reimbursed it is not necessary that your entire expenses are reimbursed let's say the total expenditure incurred was 24000 but what was reimbursed by the purchasing company was only 20 so 4000 rupee of a loss should be recorded by selling company in its books so how do i record this entry when i record the entry realization account debit to cash for the expenses paid this entry when i record i'll record it for the total amount in the exam given example let's say i have recorded it for 24000 what is the entry for pc pc entry is purchasing company account debit to realization account this is for the total pc i'll include it including with i will i'll pass the entry including the expenses reimbursed so if i am reimbursing only 20000 your credit on realization account is increasing by 20 but when i paid 24 your debit charge is increasing by 24 net impact if you see in realization 4000 rupees will be charged as loss then come to your purchasing company books purchasing company books same treatment applies the same treatment applies because if i am adding it to the pc pc increases when pc increases what happens to goodwill how do you get goodwill goodwill is equal to purchase consideration minus net assets taken over when i am adding the pc with the expenses reimbursed pc increases pc increases what happens to goodwill increases Let's have a capital reserve. Capital reserve is nothing but net assets taken over minus PC. Now PC increases. What happens to capital reserve? Capital reserve now reduces because there's a negative sign. This is in the case of purchase method. If you observe, as far as the pooling of interest method is concerned, you get the same treatment. you add it to the pc that is sufficient you add it to the pc automatically the reserve gets reduced and the pooling of interest once you are adding the pc what happens to the surplus surplus increases once surplus increases what happens reserves of selling company taken over automatically is false got it so this is your adjustment for expenses on amalgamation tick down this
What about intercompany owings? The net assets of the selling company will be acquired by the purchasing company. So both the net assets get combined. Let's say the purchasing company has to pay to the selling company or the selling company has to pay to the purchasing company. There is a debtor in the books of one company and the creditor in the books of other company. When I am combining both, I get a debtor and a creditor on both the sides of the, library, of the balance sheet. Which can be straightforward cancelled. So intercompany owing should be cancelled. Post merger. After the entire merger is over, then I pass the entry. <clears throat> How do I record the entry? We either write it as creditor account debit to debtor. Creditor has credit balance, so I am debiting it. Or I can write bills payable account debit to bills receivable. Or I can write it as loans account debit to receivables. Whatever it is. To debtors. Bills receivable, advances, this will cancel our intercompany owings. Such cancellation entry should compulsorily be passed post merger only. What about intercompany transactions then? Intercompany transaction in the sense purchasing company selling goods to selling company or the selling company selling goods to purchasing company. Whatever the situation might be, basically what happens you are getting the entire net asset. That means even the stock is taken over. But stock is not at cost now. The stock includes some unrealized profit. So identify first thing unrealized profit on Closing stock. After amalgamation, what do I have to do? I need to reduce the amount of stock because the stock is not shown at cost. So I need to compulsorily credit stock. This is for sure. We are what, what we are bothered about is what to debit in this case. So I will write goodwill account debit or capital reserve account debit. This is under purchase method. Either I increase the amount of goodwill or I reduce the amount of capital reserve. If it was pooling of interest, then I will debit the reserves. Whatever reserve you have taken over, I will use that if I am doing pooling of interest. Entry is goodwill account debit or capital reserve account debit in the case of purchase method. While in the case of a pooling of interest method, we debit the reserve. Credit to stock is compulsory in both the cases because the stock is now shown at higher than cost. I need to reduce the amount of stock to the cost. The last topic under the introduction that we have to take up and uh, this will be the first thing in your question always is your computation of purchase consideration. This is what this question, every question should start with. 
how to calculate the PC. PC computation methods I'll broadly split into two types. We call them as payments method or net payments method. Anything means the same. Net payments method and net assets method. How do I identify which one to apply and how to apply? I apply my net payments method in three situations. When PC is given as first one, a fixed amount. A takes over B for a purchase consideration of 35 lakhs. X takes over Y for a purchase consideration of 1 crore 40 lakhs. That is a fixed amount PC. I will use net payments method. Or PC is given as exchange ratio. Of shares. Among purchasing and selling companies. Purchasing company will issue two shares for every three shares held in the selling company. It's a net payments method. Or PC is given as fixed number of shares. Purchasing company will issue 35,000 shares to the shareholders of selling company as purchase consideration. Close the matter there, that is a net payments method. These three situations, wherever we get, we use net payments method for the computation. Then, when do you follow net assets method? This method is followed when net payments method cannot be adopted in computation of PC. When I do not have these three items, either of these three items, then I use net assets method. In the case of net assets method, I can say that purchase consideration is equal to assets minus outside liabilities. Assets being valued at realizable values Liabilities at settlement values This is how we calculate PC under net assets method Assets minus outside liabilities Assets valued at realizable values And liabilities valued at settlement values Other than these, we have one more method, intrinsic value method. Now, this is not some new method guys, it runs on the lines of net assets method only. 
because when I talk about intrinsic value, if you remember your intrinsic value per share, we have discussed this even in the valuation chapter where we say intrinsic value per share is equal to net assets. attributable to equity shareholders divided by number of equity shares. This is intrinsic value per share. Whenever we have this intrinsic value per share method, the first thing that we need to do is to calculate exchange ratio. How do we calculate exchange ratio? Exchange ratio is equal to intrinsic value of selling company by intrinsic value of purchasing company. This will give us the exchange ratio. Once we have the exchange ratio, we can identify number of shares to be issued by purchasing company. How will we find out number of shares issued by purchasing company? Number of shares issued by purchasing company, if you have exchange ratio, then I can say that it is number of shares in selling company multiplied by exchange ratio. And when you get your number of shares issued, my issue price per share in purchasing company is equal to intrinsic value of purchasing company. You just got the number of shares. But what is the issue price per share? Issue price per share is the intrinsic value of purchasing company. From this information, if I have to calculate purchase consideration, I will simply say it is number of shares to be issued by purchasing company multiplied by exchange ratio. This method is ending here. When I said that the intrinsic value method is similar to net assets method, then where is the similarity? The similarity comes up now. Let's try to expand this equation. PC is equal to number of shares issued into exchange ratio. Number of shares issued is step 2. How do you calculate? PC is equal to number of shares in selling company multiplied by exchange ratio. Guys, I have a formula for exchange ratio, I guess. Check what is exchange ratio. Intrinsic value of selling company by intrinsic value of purchasing company. Now, I just expanded number of shares. So, number of shares I am saying, it is number of shares in selling company 
multiplied by exchange ratio i took exchange ratio formula multiplied by i'm sorry guys multiplied by this is not exchange ratio multiplied by issue price per share yeah what is the issue price per share is correct this as issue price issue price is intrinsic value of purchasing company Can I cancel these two? Numerator part and denominator part. What am I left out with? Number of shares into intrinsic value. Intrinsic value is net assets divided by number of shares. If the net number of shares is pushed to the other side, then what is the formula? Net assets attributable to equity shareholders is equal to intrinsic value multiplied by number of shares. Number of shares multiplied by intrinsic value. this pc will always be equal to net assets of selling company remember logic always intrinsic value method whenever you solve your pc should be equal to net assets of selling company deriving the answer is not necessary guys you can just write down pc is equal to net assets pc should be equal to net assets of selling company that is logic from intrinsic value method 